If I were to mention climbing up the side of a building, what would be the first thing people think of? Spider-Man? King Kong? Let's go one step further. If I were to ask people about the first video game that featured someone climbing up a building, most arcade goers would say Donkey Kong. And they would be dead wrong. No, the game in question, while not a huge hit, made its mark on the industry and wild gamers all across the world. No, I'm not talking about Charlie's Angels. I'm talking about the innovative early arcade game Crazy Climber. What is the backstory behind the creation of this game? So stretch those muscles because it's a long way to the top. This is the history of Crazy Climber. The year is 1980 and arcade manufacturer Nichibitsu was on track to release not one, but two classic arcade games in the same year. The first one was actually a hack of Galaxian by the name of Mooncresta. I can recall playing this back in the day when it first came out and thought it was pretty enjoyable. The second game to be released that same year was the very first platform game that involved climbing up a building, which was Crazy Climber. This was the very first game that was developed by Shingeki Fujiwara, who would later go on to oversee the widely successful Bomberman series. Mr. Fujiwara was looking for something interesting to create an arcade game around and went back to an early memory from his childhood. He used to love watching the crazy stunts that silent film star Harry Lloyd would pull off. And there was one in particular that resonated with him. The 1923 short Safety Last in which his character has to scale a building from the outside. He had also seen a news report of a man dressed as Spider-Man climbing up the side of a building. He felt these would be perfect but wanted to replicate the feeling of movement and rhythm but wasn't quite sure how to do that with only one fire button. He opted instead to use twin joysticks, one for the left hand and one for the right hand which worked out extremely well. Crazy Climber was released in 1980 by Nichibutsu. You take on the role of an unnamed climber who has to climb like crazy to the top of the building while avoiding all the various obstacles. The game takes place across four buildings with varying levels of difficulty. As I mentioned, there are two joysticks in this game, one for the left hand and one for the right hand. In order to climb up the building, you have to push up and down on either joystick. To get a good rhythm, you need to alternate between the left joystick and the right joystick. It might seem a little daunting at first, but once you get the hang of it and develop a rhythm, it tends to flow quite nicely. Once you develop that nice rhythm, you can ascend the building much quicker. There are times that you will have to go side to side by pushing left or right on each joystick. It won't be easy though as there are various obstacles to watch out for including closing windows. There are also residents inside the building who apparently have had a touch of gigantism who will throw things down, such as buckets of water, flower pots, and fruit. If enough items bounce off your melon or if you are positioned just right, it will knock you off the building and you will lose a life. A giant condor will also fly across the screen, dropping eggs and, well, there's really no nice way of saying it, poopy. By the color of it though, it looks like he's been eating pepperoni hot pockets for the last three months. Similar to what Mr. Potato Head drops down, if you take too many hits from the condor, you will lose a life. The last big obstacle before you reach the top of the building is the main man himself, King Kong or someone who looks like him. Let me just pause this documentary for a second and ask a serious question. What we have here is an arcade game released in 1980, a full one year before Donkey Kong. You take control of a little man as he scales a building and encounters a giant ape at the very top. Could Shigeru Miyamoto have seen this in the arcades and wanted to create something similar? Could be. King Kong will appear on both the left and right side of the screen, all the while trying to knock you off. After you reach the top, a helicopter is seen flying back and forth. If you're able to reach up and grab it, you will receive a point bonus and a musical tune will play. You don't necessarily have to touch the helicopter to proceed to the next level, 
although you don't get a point bonus if you don't grab it. Some of the other obstacles in later levels include falling girders, electrified wires protruding from signs, and also falling crazy climber signs. On levels 3 and 4, a balloon appears which if you manage to grab it, you will be transported up 10 stories and receive a point bonus. The original version of the game included music that was copyrighted such as Baby Elephant Walk, The Entertainer, and the Pink Panther theme, but these were all removed in later revisions. The US version has sampled speech which includes an encouraging go for it, as well as oh no if you are knocked off the building. The names of each building that you have to climb are Nichibutsu, Nichibutsu Leisure, Nichibutsu UK LTD, and Nichibutsu USA Corp. An excellent tabletop version was produced in 1982 by company Entex, which actually used the twin joystick method and worked really well. Sticking with the home versions for just a moment, there was even a board game released in 1981. The game had a cameo in Rocky 3 when Pauly walks into the arcade. In 1988, Crazy Climber 2 was released only in Japan. The graphics and sounds have been given a significant upgrade including some nice parallax scrolling as you are moving up the building. The core gameplay is essentially the same as the original but with different building layouts and different obstacles. There are also advertising signs throughout the game such as Coca-Cola. You have to make it to the top of 6 buildings instead of 4 as in the original. Rather than the game starting over after completing the 6th building, the game is over. In 1996, Hyper Crazy Climber was released for the PlayStation in Japan. This time around, you get your choice of three different climbers, a boy, a girl, and a robot, each one having different attributes. Once again, the gameplay is basically the same as in the original, with you having to make it to the top of the building or mountain in certain cases while avoiding all of the obstacles. There are three types of control schemes available, including an easy option if you don't like the original arcade style. You don't just climb buildings, but also mountains and even underwater structures. There is a handy save feature which really helps the game's difficulty. In the year 2000, coincidentally enough, Crazy Climber 2000 was released for the PlayStation. This is basically a remake of the original arcade game only for the first time using full 3D polygon graphics. Instead of 4 buildings this time around, you have 3 to ascend but everything feels like Crazy Climber. The music has also been updated and sounds really good. I really do like the update to 3D and being able to rotate around the side of a building to continue your climb. It looks really cool and they did a really good job on the effect. The original arcade game was also included on the disc. <laughs> In 2005, the original arcade game was released by Hamster under their classic game lineup. In 2007, Crazy Climber Wii was released in Japan. This is a 3D remake of the original although you do get to pick 4 different characters each with different attributes. The graphics look great in 3D and the controls are very similar to the arcade original only this time using the remote in one hand and the nunchuck in the other. There are 6 buildings to complete, but this time around there is a multiplayer mode which offers 4 unique settings and 1 secret building.
The arcade original was also released on the Wii Virtual Console in 2010 in Japan. Over the years, the game has been released on the PlayStation Network as well as the Nintendo Switch as part of the Arcade Archive series. Now let's go back and talk about the conversions of the original arcade game. There weren't a whole lot of options back in 1981, so let's start with the Emerson Arcadia 2001 version. The Emerson was a short-lived home system that produced about 35 games with Crazy Climber being one of them. The first thing you notice when you start playing this game is how your score is only visible when you stop moving. When you are moving, it disappears which gives a very seizure-inducing effect. The game itself visually reminds me of Spider-Man for the Atari 2600 but with graphics that are even worse. The Condor and King Kong are both missing along with the helicopter at the top. The controls feel really stiff and are not fluid like the arcade game. Since there is only one fire button available, sacrifices had to be made to the controls. Up next is the Atari 2600 version. This was the very first exclusive game released in the Atari fan club. Despite taking place at night, this is a pretty good conversion. Your main character does look like the Incredible Hulk though. Perhaps he's going to duke it out with King Kong. That is, if King Kong had actually made it into the game. I would pay folding money to see these two monsters go at it. The graphics look really good with smooth animation as you climb up the building. Mr. Potato Head also makes his return, dropping all kinds of objects out of the windows. The flying condor with diarrhea also makes an appearance as well as the helicopter at the top. The controls are responsive despite only having one fire button. This is about as good as Crazy Climber is going to get on the 2600. At least until Champ Games decides to tackle it. The Bally Astrocade was a little scene system that was released in the late 1970s. It was known for its powerful graphics at the time and its version of Crazy Climber is no exception. The graphics are fantastic and of the home ports done at the time, this one is leaps and bounds above the rest. The problem is, a lot of the content is missing including the Condor, King Kong, the music, and the helicopter at the top. The controls are responsive and despite only having one fire button, it does feel like Crazy Climber. If you can get past the missing content, this is a pretty good version to check out. Up next is the Wonder Swan version. Despite only being in black and white, the graphics look great and almost everything from the arcade game has been included. The scrolling and animation is nice and smooth. The sound effects are sampled straight from the arcade game and the music is really good. The controls are nice and tight and it feels like Crazy Climber. For a handheld version, this one is really well done. The Famicom version feels more like Crazy Climber 1.5 with extras thrown in. The core gameplay remains the same, but this time there are 12 buildings to ascend. There are also side quests you can complete which greatly extends the length of the game. One cool feature are the two joystick add-ons you attach to your Famicom controllers, allowing you to get the actual twin stick action just like in the arcades. Sound effects and music are adequate, but overall, it's a really well done home version. Yeah. 
If you're looking for one of the most accurate arcade conversions not running on your emulation, look no further than the X68000. Literally everything from the arcade game has been included from the sample sound and music to the graphics. The only thing that is different from the arcade game is the use of only one fire button. Supposedly it is compatible with certain two button controllers that were released for the system. The game was released as a two pack along with Crazy Climber 2. And finally we have Nichibutsu's Arcade Classics which was released for the Super Famicom in Japan. This was a compilation of three games including Mooncrusta, Frisky Tom, and Crazy Climber. All of these are very close to Arcade Perfect from the graphics to the sampled sounds and the playability. Crazy Climber came out at a time when space shooters were all the rage, so this one definitely stood out from the rest. While the American release was nowhere near as popular as in Japan, the game has stood the test of time and is now considered a cult classic. It is a bit short with only four levels, but the gameplay is addicting and keeps you coming back for one more try. If you've never tried this game, be sure to check it out. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video and want to support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page at the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you so much for watching.